3.4, more rules for EL. After we learn the basic properties, we still, we need to learn many different rules. Yeah. So for those, you know, so many rules, uh, later, uh, after I complete this topic, uh, I will use many examples to help you understand the details of those rules. Yeah. Otherwise, you may not get uh, all the possible cases. Yeah. So we need to see more exercise questions. Yeah. So I will use several videos to you know, discuss different situations of exercise questions. Yeah. All right. More rules. Yeah. So let's look at the uh, special rules. Yeah. Some rule, rules are pretty general. So general rules and special cases. Yeah. All right. First, EL syntax is loosely typed because there is a type issue, right? Yeah. In Java, different data types. Yeah. But uh, EL, we know, we want to make the expression as simple as possible. So we do not have room to deal with types inside EL. Yeah. So for that reason, there is some automatic type conversion. Yeah. So those conversion rules are hidden. Yeah. So you cannot see it, but the conversions will happen automatically. Yeah. All right. So here you can see many implicit type conversions built in. Yeah. We already, we saw one in the previous video. Yeah. So remember for the list case, yeah. suppose we have a list object, okay? Yeah, suppose, so this is a, you know, EL list object. Yeah. Now we use square bracket. So remember, we use string double quotes to around that, you know, numerical value too. But this, it's a string, but you can see it will convert it to number two automatically. Yeah. So don't worry, so string two, yeah. When the element is accessed through index number, this number will be used. Yeah. So that's one of the cases, conversion, data conversion cases. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. The primary rule for expression is that it should evaluate to some value. Yeah. The primary rule, okay? Yeah. So very general, high level. So this rule tells us when we use EL, we should display some value of our data yeah. for data display purpose. That's the reason we use EL, not for other purpose, for data display purpose. Yeah. Yeah. So based on that principle, high level principle, now you know something you cannot do using EL. Okay. Here, there are several things you cannot do. First, Declare variables within an expression. Declare variable. So no output, right? Declare variable. So you cannot use EL to do it. Yeah. Perform some kind of assignment. Assign one value to another variable. You cannot do it in EL, right? Yeah. All right. Or operation that does not result in value. Like a, you call a function, but the function return type is void. You cannot do it. <laughs> if the function returns some value, then you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. But, so if it returns nothing, then you cannot do it in EL. Yeah. All right, yeah. So that's the 
direct result from that primary principle, rule or principle. Yeah. Next. Yeah. Index for an array or a list in an EL expression. Yeah, I just talk about index, right? Yeah, so you may put in quotes. Yeah, or re, uh, look at the example I used before, list. Okay, suppose list. Yeah, if I do not use quotes, I just use two directly. Okay, it's perfect. Yeah, you, you just do it directly, no conversion needed. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Mm. If the thing to the left of the brackets is an array or a list, and the index is a string literal, string literal, then numerical or non-numeric? Numeric, so integer, non-integer, so those cases. So the index is coerced to an INT. Yeah. So here the question is, what do you mean? What what kind of what what way to use to coerce the string literal? We do not have that detail, right? We do not have that details. Yeah. To get that details, we may like to do some experiments to see, you know, what kind of values. Yeah. But for that kind of detail, so we may we may like to ignore it yeah. because usually when people use people use use the right way yeah. can you imagine that someone used this way yeah. if you use this way you know like abc right you know that's ridiculous right yeah that's ridiculous yeah yeah although you can do testing but in general so we we do not like to consider that situation, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Next, non-string literal inside an EL expression. So there is another case. Inside that square brackets, we do not put a string literal. We put a a name that is not string literal. Yeah. So here, the non-string literal, you wish to look at in this way. Non-string literal, parenthesis. Yeah. String literal thing. So non-string literal. Yeah. Do not understand non-string literal. Okay. Non-string literal. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not that, that case. Yeah. So very easy to get confused. Yeah. All right. If there are no quotes. Yeah. So what do you mean non-string literal? No quotes. A name without quotes. That's what we mean, this non-string literal. Okay. So you can put a you can put a name not inside quotes. Yeah. Inside the brackets. Yeah. Alright. So how to understand that? Yeah. The container evaluates. Here we use container. Sometimes people use EL engine. Yeah. EL engine. Because EL engine is part of the container, right? Container much bigger, can do many things. So EL engine is one small component inside that container. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not wrong. So container evaluates what's inside the brackets by searching for an attribute attribute you know the attribute right in different scopes so searching for an attribute bound under that name so that name should correspond to an attribute name inside different scopes okay so search for it if you find it retrieve the value yeah all right and it substitutes it substitutes that name inside the brackets by the value of the attribute. Okay? So that's the way to use the non-string literal case. Yeah. 
Here we can use some example to see it. Yeah, soon. Yeah. All right. Then another case. Yeah. If there is an implicit object, implicit object. Okay. And we know it should be el implicit object. Later, the next video, I will talk about those el implicit objects. Yeah. If there is an implicit object with the same name yeah so you may you may put a name that happens to be an implicit object name okay so what would happen yeah then the implicit object will always be used yeah so the implicit object has the higher priority to be used in that situation okay yeah so that's the rule yeah all right so here let me give you a simple example to explain so this rule here, yeah, but not for the implicit object, yeah, for the, you know, first case. Yeah. Example, suppose we have this EL expression, dollar pair of curly braces, person, yeah, person, the object name, person. Okay? Then inside brackets, you see this name without quotes, without quotes. Yeah. So how to understand this expression? Yeah. Now we use this rule, okay? Yeah. Search for an attribute bound under that name, bound under this name, this thing, this name thing. Yeah. Okay. So the question is, is there an attribute with a name called, double quotes name? Yeah. Search all the scopes. If there is any attribute that happens to be this name. If there is one, retrieve the value of that attribute. Then put the value inside this bracket. Okay? Here you can see, in this way, you can use a variable that stores some value to replace something inside the square brackets. So that's something special. So if you compare the dot operator, in dot operator you cannot do it, right? In dot operator we cannot do it that way, you know. Dot, after the dot, you have some variable, the variable can take different values stored in the data in different scopes. How can you do that? So dot operator cannot do this feature, but the bracket operator can do it. So you can see yeah, the bracket operator more powerful than the dot operator. Yeah. All right, so I stopped the video for part C here. Yeah. Next, I have a few more videos to complete this topic, EL. Yeah. So let me stop here. Yeah. Thank <phone rings> you.